The next task is to uh, make it so that when the power up or the power variable of the bird goes up, um, he shoots out two bullets instead of just one. And so the first step that we need to do is we need to copy over the code from bullet one over to bullet two because it's going to be doing the exact same thing, right? Um, if you remember, this is all the firing mechanism so that we cannot uh, hold down the power the fire button and they will like shoot out in a stream. Right. And then this is all saying if I uh, touch any of the t touch any of the butterflies or white bird or any of the enemies to go away, right? And so um, yeah, we, I went ahead and copied over the code over here to bullet two, uh, as you should do as well. And the one thing that we're going to add is this little if statement here. So this is what you have, um, but we only want to fire off a bullet if right and only if power is greater than one so uh, for bullet two if power is greater than one that means it's either two three four or five or six and that's when we want uh, bullet two to fire out and if power is equal to one we don't want it to fire out right. okay so now the next question is how should the bullet two be oriented when it fires out and so I made this little drawing here to show you how the bullets are going to fire. When power is equal to two, the bullets are going to fire out like this, two bullets, a stream, um, slightly angled. And then when you get a third power, a second power up and your power goes up to three, uh, you're going to get this three-way stream. And then when power goes up to four, it's going to be a three-way stream, but with bigger bullets. And then when you get another power up, the bullets get even bigger, right, and more powerful. So uh, what we need to do is we need to change the angle of the second bullet and also the first bullet right, so that they fire out in this kind of a stream. But we only want to change the angle of the bullets if power is equal to 2. So let's come back over here. And uh, we could come in here and we could say if. Yeah, right over here. I guess you could do it anywhere you want, but let's go ahead and put it right there, right? And we could say if power is equal to 2, then we are going to change his angle. He's going to turn a little bit. He's going to turn that way. Mm, oh, how many degrees should we do this? Maybe we could do 10 degrees, OK? Um, but of course, we want to make sure that he's pointed in the 90 degree direction on the green flag. OK, um, OK, so 90 means he's pointing to the east, to the right. And then when I press the space bar, if power is equal to 2, we're going to turn him 10 degrees downward. And I think that's all we need. Um, and now we need to set that up for bullet 1. So we're going to go to events. I'm sorry, to control get another if statement and say if uh, when I start as clone oh let me see where should I put it maybe I don't need to put it in there I can put it right here like I did with the other one I could say if I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to say if power is equal to 2 then I'm going to motion and turn this way 10 degrees. Okay. Um, of course, I want to make sure that he's pointing uh, towards the right side of the screen. So I'm going to put this on the green flag. And uh, yeah, that should make, that should allow us to shoot two bullets when I get the first power up. So let's try that. Oh, so that's a little bit buggy. Um, now, why is that? When space bars press, oh, because it keeps on turning to the, it keeps on turning. Every time I press the space bar, it keeps turning. So maybe we should take this out and we should have that happen in a forever loop right over here in the green flag. Oh, well, actually. That might not be a good way to do it. That might cause more problems as well. Why don't we put this point 90 right there? And then, yeah, we're going to put this in here. Uh -huh. So we're going to put, leave the, let's leave the code the exactly the way it was, except now we're going to put point 90 inside, right above this if statement here. Right. 
So let's go ahead and try that. And with the blue one, let's do that as well. Let's put a 0.90 right above what we added. So right here is what we added. So I'm going to put it right above it, 0.90. And let's see, the second bullet didn't seem to come out at all. So let's go ahead and try this and see what happens. Um, ooh, I think what... No, it's good. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. I'm not sure why the second bullet's not appearing, but let's go ahead and see if we can work this out. Okay, so the first bullet is going right, but the second bullet's not showing. So, why is that? Let's see, when I start as clone... Oh, I get it. It's um, because of the firing variable. Okay, so each bullet needs to have their own firing variable, right? Because if bullet one is firing, that means bullet two cannot fire. Okay, if we're using the same firing variable. So let's go over to variables. Let's say make a variable, say firing underscore two. And let's go ahead and initialize him right over here next to the other firing variable. Firing two set to zero. Let's come back over here, and instead of using uh, firing, let's use firing two. And hopefully that will fix everything up here. Firing two to zero, yep. Okay, so now let's go ahead and check that out. Yay, got two bullets, right? But if you notice there, the second bullet doesn't do anything to the enemies, right? And so I'll leave that as a, as a challenge exercise for you 